welcome to Technically Speaking, Capital Area Technical Center's video podcast of all things Capital Area Technical Center. Today I'm joined by my first guest, Zachary Roy, who is a senior from Coney, enrolled in our firefighting um, program. It's a Monday here when we're recording, so to get us started on a little light note, how about you tell us something fun about yourself? Um, I like, uh, I'm a tool collector and I restore vintage tools and I kind of find a lot of fun in so, woodworking. So what kind of vintage tools? This is interesting. I, have a, I like axes and sledgehammers and stuff like that. Hammers and I like that type of, uh, these old tools that people have used for hundreds of years, just fixing them and making them work again. Well, I think we could do a whole show on that alone. I'm sure. That, so it's a lot of the, you said woodworking. Yes. A lot of the restoration of the wood, like replacing, I would think, handles. Re replacing handles, fixing handles, sometimes even fixing metal, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I enjoy it a lot. It brings a lot of peace. Oh, I bet it is relaxing. You yeah. You've done it a lot during this COVID. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Um, tell us. So let's talk a little bit about the firefighting program that you're in. Okay. And you were selected as the professional of the month for the school this month because of mm -hmm. the great work that you do in that program every day. Um, what have you found that you've enjoyed about the um, firefighting program? I really enjoy the hands-on work and the teamwork like feeling of everybody. You really learn to trust one another really quickly because at the end of the day, that's, that's the number one thing is trust, is when, especially when you have someone that might have to save your life one day. It's a lot of trust, a lot of trust. So what are some of the hands-on things? You said you've done a lot of hands-on things uh, in the class. Yes, a lot of uh, physical training. Physical training is number one. That's one of the most important things, mentally and physically. And then we do different activities that um, kind of include firefighting. So we'll uh, this week we were doing forcible entry. So we'll be breaking doors and maybe when different types of windows and learning about how s to safely get in a building as fast as possible. Now I'm kind of disappointed that you have a mask on because I bet when you said you're breaking doors down there was a smile on your face. For sure, for <laughs> sure. I'm super excited about that. That'll be a lot of fun this week, that's for sure. It's never not been fun. It's always constant fun in that class, whether it's in the classroom learning or outside doing our activities. It's a lot of fun. Oh, fun. And so you said you described it as a lot of fun. Uh, have you had some challenges in the class? Oh, yeah, for sure. As someone that wasn't on a uh, junior department before I started uh, firefighting CATC, I'm, I constantly am stepping out of my comfort zone, which makes it really easy. And uh, I, I learn quicker that way. Where you're stepping out of your comfort zone, you tend to uh, pick up things faster because you kind of have to. And there's no oh, I'm just going to my old ways. You're learning everything new. So it's kind of, I mean, one reason that you were selected as our professional of the month was just because of what you just said, right. that you um, hadn't had any firefighting experience, unlike the rest of your classmates. Right. But um, Lieutenant Johnson says how fast you're picking up things and going and even like um, going past their knowledge. Right. With, so that's awesome. It's awesome to hear that a student that doesn't have firefighting experience can take the program and be very successful. You're a great example right. of that. Yeah. Um, so what are some things you're looking forward to doing? It's only, I know it's the beginning of November, so we have some more time left in the year. What are you looking forward to well, in the program? Other than the forcible entry door this week, <laughs> which is I'm looking greatly forward to. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we have a burn trailer coming at towards the end of the year where we have a maze with some smoke, kind of navigate through. We did something like that last week, but it was just fog. It was dark. It was great, though. It was. A, it's a lot of good practice as to what it's like when it comes to actually having to do it to save lives. I hope you all heard that. They were actually in this trailer that was filled with fog, fog yep. and it was dark, mm -hmm. and you had to find your way, but it wasn't like a fun house at the, at the fair. Right. It was like you were crawling into, I saw, I peeked in there in the daylight. Oh yeah. There were some really small places you had to get into. Oh, for sure, for sure. A foot by, a foot by two feet big. It's, especially when you have an air pack on and this gommy firefighting gear, it's, it's hard. With three people in there, you know, kind of just lined up, it's, it's very, uh, it's very interesting. 
there's a lot of you can't hear anything in there so there's a lot of screaming back and forth trying to keep yourself calm and not panic that's the number one thing is not panic that's in times like that not panicking really gets you to learn how what you should and shouldn't do in a real fire well, great. I don't think I could have done that when I saw oh, what you guys were doing. I didn't think I could either, but <laughs> when, when you're out of your comfort zone, you learn to uh, push yourself harder, and you can get further. That is true. That is great life advice, too, yeah, for in, sure. in, in every situation. Yeah. Awesome. So, Zach, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Like, what do you do? Um, you talked about um, working, restoring um, tools. Right. What else do you do in your free time? I'm also a, a, a huge musician. I'm a big music lover. I play a lot of different instruments. I'm a big uh, woodworker. I, I really enjoy music, and in woodworking, it really helps ease the mind, especially when you at stressful times like this. It's kind of a good way to escape into your own world and enjoy what you like doing. I'm so glad you found an outlet. I think that's yeah. really important for people right now. For sure. At any time, really. Yeah. But now, especially. So tell you, with all that going for you, musician, woodworker, firefighter, what are your plans after you, what do your, does your career look like in your eyes? As, as much as I'd like to think, I'm sure, <laughs> I, I have a, I'm kind of always juggling. I've, I've always wanted to join the military, and I really enjoy the fire service so far. And luckily those things can come together in yeah. certain branches. And I do enjoy logging. So logging and firefighting, they kind of mix well with wildland firefighting, and it, musicianship is more of a hobby than I, than I want it to be a career, but it would be interesting nonetheless. It's kind of all, they all mix in with each other, which makes it super easy to figure out which one I really want to do, but who knows at this point. It's kind of all going back and forth, it's kind of, I like this, I like that, can't really decide. Well, I mean, you you certainly have plenty of time, and um, oh, yeah. a lot of times people change their careers. It's kind of different than it was, um, you know, when when my parents and I was growing up that they worked at the same place for a long time. Right. And um, here nowadays, people are constantly changing. You know, depending on what your interests are, what opportunities are out there. So I'm kind of glad you mentioned that, and I really am excited that. You talked about, you know, you're in the firefighting program, but all these other things that it's related to. Right. That right. any of our programs are kind of the same, that I always say there are there a are hundred, uh, probably a thousand jobs right. related to that program that yeah. you're in. Tons so. of jobs I, I don't even know about. It, me too. Me too. You just mentioned some. So mm -hmm. it was certainly so nice talking to you, Zach. Yes, I really thank appreciate you, you um, coming, and um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. My next guest is another student that has been selected as Professional of the Month here at Capital Area Technical Center. Things we look at when we select these students for this honor are things like having a positive attitude, being on time, working well with their peers, all things that will make them successful in the workplace. And we like to recognize them because they're demonstrating those attributes here at the Tech Center while they're taking programs. Just to tell you a little bit about this next guest, her instructor has said that she is ambitious, responsible, and has a truly amazing personality. And I think you'll see it when we get a chance to hear from her. My second guest on um, Technically Speaking this week is Lily Bell. She is a junior from Monmouth Academy and she's in our Medical Veterinarian Terminology class. So, Lily, if you won't mind telling us, why did you decide to attend the medical veterinarian class? Well, I'm carrying on my family tradition of being in the medical field. My great-grandfather was a veterinarian, my grandmother was a delivery nurse, and my father was a general nurse. So I'm just carrying on the blood of the family. And I decided that Cassie would be an excellent fit for me, as I had another friend at Monmouth Academy who really liked the program. So I thought it would just be a good fit for me. And I love Mrs. Parker. She's a wonderful teacher, and I'm learning so easily. It's just an excellent program, and I enjoy it very much. So that is very interesting that you come from a long line of people in the medical field. Oh, yes. Yeah, and it, it <laughs> does sound like it is in your blood. It is. My, <laughs> my great-grandfather was, I think he was a veterinarian in the middle of Ohio, 
actually it was Alabama, so he would see all sorts of different animals, like he would have monkeys from a personal pets, or dogs, or cows, or anything and everything. So just from him, and then on the other side of the family, it just kept going down generation through generation. So I decided that veterinary wasn't exactly for me, because I'd rather deal with people than a monkey. <laughs> but <laughs> I thought it would be a great thing, and I'd just love to help people. So I figured it would just be a great career fit for me. Definitely. Um, so what have you enjoyed learning in the class so far this year? <sighs> There's a lot to name. I did struggle with muscul musculoskeletal, excuse me, as I had to name all the different bones and the different muscles, and that felt like two units collapsed into one. So that was a kind of a pain, but I really did enjoy the integumentary system, which is all about the different layers of the skin and the sweat pores and your hair follicles and whatnot. Was I'm really glad fun. you told me what integumentary means. <laughs> <laughs> so you like that unit? And I do. So do we have more muscles in our body or bones when you say? We have more, I would say we have more bones. We have more 206 bones. bones as a fully grown adult. I'm putting you on the spot. I was just curious. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> <laughs> that makes sense, though, that we would have more yes. bones. Okay. Um, what are you looking forward to to learning this year? I'm really looking forward to learning about the heart. I am really interested in the nervous system. I, I love just watching open heart surgeries. I know that sounds very strange, but it's just interesting to see how the body works because the heart is the body's engine. So I just love seeing all the different little things that the heart can do with pumping blood all over to your arms, to your legs, and bringing back oxygen. It's just it really interests me. I am so glad we have people like you in our world that are interested <laughs> in this because it, the medical field is just huge. It's a um, giant. Yeah, so it's really good. And, uh, you know, with this COVID, as an example, more and more things keep popping up and uh, we're learning more and more about the body and how to better fix it and keep it working for a while. So, oh, yeah. yeah, very interesting. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do when you're not in school. I am a really big artist. My mom runs an art gallery in downtown Monmouth called Four Pence Gallery, and it's a vintage store along with art pieces that she sells and other artists come in to sell. And we just go around painting murals with different people who, uh, how would I put this? They, <laughs> they would request us specially, and we would just go and paint murals. We have a giant kickboard in downtown Monmouth that we painted for someone and they donated class money to my class because we did that and I painted murals for different businesses and I did a mural on the windows for the Dempsey Center when they had a big thing earlier this year so we j I love to paint I love to longboard which you couldn't tell looking at me as walking I'm a giraffe on roller skates <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed a lot um, I do enjoy reading as well I love love reading I'm going through Stephen King's It, and it's about this thick. It's, it's a pain, but I'm getting through it. Oh, good for you. And then <laughs> he's, you. he's a difficult read. It's oh, not it like it, you have to really concentrate. And it's like a thick soup of reading. Like, you have to get through so much just to see what he's talking about. But I love it. It's wonderful. <laughs> thick soup of reading. I love that way <laughs> yes. to describe it. That's <laughs> perfect. And so what um, do you have, like, when you say you paint, do you have a specialty of what you paint or... I love landscapes. Okay. The landscapes are gorgeous. I love just all the different, especially clouds. I love all the different ways that color can be captured within the clouds. I just, I don't know. Just little things like that fascinate me. That is very cool. Have you had more time with this COVID to do some painting? Definitely. Oh, I'd sit down for hours and hours and I'd paint. It was amazing. I loved it so much. Well, and I'm interested in, in your family shop. I'll have to check that out sometime. Definitely. It sounds very <laughs> neat. Um, so you talked a little bit about your interest in the medical field. I am now just super curious as to what your future plan is. What do you, where do you see your career? So I'm first going to go through nursing school and then I'll work in the field for about two to three years. And then I want to be a traveling nurse, which is where you can go across the country for periods of three months at a time and work at different places. So I could go from Tennessee one chunk of time and then all the way to Montana for the next chunk of time. But I want to do that as my career choice. I've had a lot of family friends who did it and they loved it, so I just thought it was the place for me since I want to travel and see and experience. Oh, that sounds <laughs> great. I'm, I'm almost envious now that I don't have <laughs> the affinity to be in the medical field. It certainly takes a special person, and especially to go into nursing, um, but what a, what a great way to be able to see the United States. Yes. 
or beyond, even if you want to travel outside the United States. That would be wonderful. I'm actually considering doing that if I possibly could, but we'll see what the medical field holds for me in the future. All the possibilities <laughs> are going to be endless, oh, I yes. think. I think, for <laughs> sure. Well, Lily, I thank you so much for taking time out of class to come and talk with me. And, and thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, it was great getting to know you a little bit better. I see you coming in every day, and <laughs> we have, a, I think, the same interest in some fashion sometimes yes, going on. Definitely. So, um, yeah, um, I, I hope you keep in touch with us because I think there'll be oh, great things you. coming um, with you in your career, and we'll be glad to keep tabs on you and see what you're up to. Oh, definitely. Thank you for joining us on this um, edition of Technically Speaking, All Things Capital Area Technical Center. And if you like this video, I hope that you will consider subscribing to our channel. And we will have another podcast out in two weeks. Thank you.